Yo, what is up? Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. My name is Jordan Anderson. Thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for joining me tonight on Friday. I hope you're excited. And today we're going to be talking about the Wedding Photographer's Guide to Facebook Ads. That's what we're going to be talking about, how to make some money with Facebook ads, how to drive traffic, how to get ads in front of people, how to get your work, your concepts, your pitches, your hooks, whatever. The, the hey, look at me click right here, buy now, and then go to your website and convert and all that stuff. Yeah, okay. Calm down, Jordan. All right. Welcome. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, we're live tonight. It's Friday. Uh, we'll start a little bit late. That's okay. It's uh, We're still being consistent. I don't care that we're just a couple minutes late. Uh, I do care when we have to skip days, though. So um, let's see. Let's do a little housekeeping real quick before we get into the uh, Facebook tutorial. This is going to be kind of a Facebook 101. This is for, uh, this is going to be kind of aimed at beginners. This is for wedding, this is aimed at wedding photographers specifically, but this is also more kind of on the beginner side. So if you're into Facebook ads already, maybe you'll learn something here, but probably uh, it'll it'll just be a little bit more review, or you'll hear it from my perspective. That, that, that's kind of what you're here for, my perspective. Um, some f little bit of housekeeping while we let everybody kind of pile into the live stream. I've been posting videos on, so we've been doing live streams. Jordan's not we, it's just you. I've been doing live streams uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday consistently. And when those videos are done, I usually unlist them uh, so that if you are still on my email list, you still have access to watch them later in case you missed it. Uh, and then I played around with like going private with the videos. So I took the live streams, all you, it's all, a lot of my live streams now are private. So you watch it right now. And if it's not there, or after this live stream specifically, I'll probably make it go private. And I and then my upload schedule, I kind of see these two as two separate strategies. Uh, the live stream is kind of current. I'm here advertising content marketing while also like being entertaining. And you can kind of like there's there's a special moment with watching me live. Uh, and then there's the strategy of consistently uploading just regular content. So I'm taking these live streams, I'm editing them down, taking out all this intro that you're listening to right now, editing them down. If it's a 30 minute stream, an hour long stream, condense it down to 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever the content may be, and then post it. So far I've been posting consistently on Tuesdays, and then I've been playing around with Eclipse. So taking the 40 minute live stream that has been edited down and then taking it say there's three lessons i usually like to do three or four lessons in each of these videos chop it down into one lesson per video and i have been i've gotten some mixed results i'm still like it feels to me like i'm still need to run the experiment a little bit longer because the video i drop on tuesday i want it to get i want to give and you should Consider this too with your upload schedule. You want to give the video enough time to breathe. You don't want to upload a 40 minute video on Tuesday and then on Wednesday upload more videos because maybe it's just on Wednesday that your audience is just now seeing that video. Um, so it felt like I'm kind of, so I was trying to figure out, okay, do I post the 40 minute video, 30 minute video, the big one on Tuesday and then post the clips on Thursday or Friday. So I've been playing around. Do I drop it on Thursday? Do I drop it on Friday? Usually doesn't get seen when it's on Friday. Like I dropped it today. The views are kind of not there at all, to be honest. Um, so it's kind of, you know, but then is the, but then I have to, but there are so many variables to this because it could be the content is not interesting enough. It could be that the video when combined is interesting. You know, when I like this recent week was three big life lessons. That's interesting. But when I just condense it down to one life lesson, maybe that's not so interesting or maybe that's not worth my time as a viewer. So it's been kind of like you had to experiment a little bit. You had to kind of see 
what is it what what works what doesn't sometimes it's the title sometimes it's the thumbnail it's kind of when you're always uploading videos you should kind of upload kind of watch the first hour and then like tweak as you go upload the thumbnail update the thumbnail update the title um it's an experiment you just have to see because you never know what's going to work and it's also at the same time it's not for you to judge what is working or it's not for you to judge what you think is good content just i really just look at it like i have to just put this out there see what sticks see what kind of works and i kind of have and then you start to kind of gain a general sense of what i think this is going to work and usually you're right okay so throughout this um throughout this lesson if you have questions, if you're watching on YouTube, which you are now, uh, drop your questions in the live chat. I want to make this as interactive as possible for you guys. I don't want this to be um, so one-sided, so one, uh, what's, what's the word I'm trying to say? Like a one-way street. I want this to be, as I say something, as I'm sharing these tips about Facebook ads, because it, it can get a little complicated. Um Drop some questions. If I say anything unclear, drop a question. If you have a question, uh, we can go specific. And then I'll either save it to the end or I'll take a little break in the middle and we'll uh, we'll cover it then. So let's switch over now. Let's talk about Facebook ads because I think – let me kind of talk in general about Facebook ads. Whenever clients come to me and ask me uh, – I. I still don't understand this, but uh, I give everybody credit. Everyone is at their own place, at their own journey in their own digital marketing world. Uh, but Facebook ads is whatever you think of Facebook. It's the best ads product there is to buy out there currently, I think. Uh, I think there's nothing more granular. There's nothing more targeted. There's nothing more specific. And there's nothing more with this kind of broad general access to the masses than Facebook ads. Uh, if you're, if you had to spend, if I, I've always told people like if I had to divide up my ads budget and I only had like, or I had to choose one platform or one paid ad strategy, it's going to be Facebook ads. It's YouTube ads. Those are great. Google ads are great, but there's nothing like Facebook ads. Uh, just how consistent it is and just how people are in somehow also in the buying mode when they're on Facebook and because it just it's so pinpoint targeted and also at the same time Facebook helps you make better creative ads uh, more optimized ads so that you can serve it in front of the right people uh, get them to click get them to engage uh, I'll repeat this theme a lot and this may be hard to believe but Facebook wants you to succeed as an advertiser Facebook wants you to succeed because you are giving them money and if they don't and if you don't like the results you got, if you don't like the experience, then you're not gonna put your ad dollars there. And that means Facebook doesn't get any money from you. So remember this theme, Facebook wants you to succeed as an advertiser. Let's switch over now to our pretty little presentation. Whoa. Nope. This one. Not the waiting screen. I don't want to send you back to the waiting screen. Send you guys back to the lobby. I'm playing on OBS. I want to. I want to play with live stream stream labs. See what that's like. Um, yeah. Okay. So the wedding photographer's guide to Facebook ads. I have run my very first exposure to Facebook ads was when I was running my own wedding videography company, and I found it to be the best, it, this was five years ago, so a lot has changed. The ad dollars and budgets have increased significantly, but I found that it was such a great return on investment, dollar for dollar, I could, I mean, this was back in 2015, so I was spending, if I were to, you know, my my weddings back then were, my videos were $1,500, $2,000, uh, $1,000 for, I think, the lowest one, and I was able to spend, I could spend probably $150 to $250 on a campaign and I would get at least one new client from it. And that kind of paid for, and the, and the beauty of that is just, I say at least one new client. I've, there were, you know, a lot of inquiries that came in, you know, two or three on one campaign at, at some point. And if you book those, then that kind of basically pays for 
the Facebook ad itself. So if you book a $1,000 client and you spend $200 to acquire that client or $100 to acquire that client or at one point I think I did an ad and I only spent like 50 bucks and I got a uh, booking uh, a couple days later and I was like, great, I only spent 50 bucks. I'm going to take all this money that I just got from this wedding, 1000 bucks, and pretty much dump it back into Facebook ads and just kind of you know keep the churn going. And I'll talk about that in a, in a later slide. Uh, so it was great. It was, um, and being a content creator, it's I think it, we have the biggest advantage out of any other business that there is. We we're photographers. We know how to use Facebook, or we know how to use Photoshop. We know how to use Adobe, Creative Suite, Premiere, After Effects. Uh, we kind of have a, cr a very nice edge when it comes to Facebook advertising compared to someone who is like, whatever, they design t-shirts or they are in manufacturing or they're in a lawyer or they're in financial services. They have to go find a photographer. They have to go find a video creator. They have to go find a content creator, video editor, wizard kid, whiz kid to make the ads, make them look pretty. And then also maybe find a copywriter to find the creative words to say or the headlines that are going to catch people's attention. And so just just know that if you're a wedding photographer right now, you have a very nice creative edge over a lot of businesses. You can use your wedding photos as creative in your Facebook ads. So just remember that. Don't don't be so don't be so scared about this. So my goal for this is very. I want this to be kind of an entry level understanding of Facebook ads. I don't want this to be some 201, 301 advanced course. This is just let's dip our toes into Facebook ads. Let's kind of understand the fundamentals. Because uh, I don't. Because another goal I should have put is I want to. I want you guys to not be scared to get on Facebook ads or to. There's some people that just say like they are somehow proud of the fact that they don't use paid advertising or that hey I'm I do. I don't even have a website. I just have Instagram, and that's where all my inquiries come in, and I'm doing just great. It's like, well, okay, but you could be bringing in more clients. You could be bringing in more leads. Uh, you don't have to remember. You don't have to shoot all the weddings that you bring in. You can outsource. So if you can scale your business up with Facebook ads, that mean might mean you can have a little bit more revenue this year. Just kind of consider that. Today's lesson plan, we're going to cover budget, campaign goal, target audience, and finally creative slash copywriting. So let's start with first lesson. Lesson number one is budget. Now, with a budget, and I should back up a little bit, and I'm kind of already talking about this, but we are aiming to find a repeatable lead generator. Whatever it is, it could be Facebook ads, could be YouTube ads. It could be you dancing down the street with a sandwich board that has your business on it. Whatever it is the marketing tactic is, this this YouTube, this live stream, whatever the marketing tactic is, we're trying to find something that is that works, that is repeatable, and that it, and when I say repeatable too, I'm also implying that it has repeatable results. I put in this amount of input, and I know that I'm going to consistently get this amount of output. If I put in if I, you know, spend a hundred dollars on Facebook ads, and that gets me five customers, great. Now I just got five new customers. Like, and if I spend another hundred dollars, I'll get five more customers. So and then, you know, you get those five new customers. Those five customers now spend a hundred dollars each at your store, or at your, or at, or book with you, or book a wedding session, or whatever it is. They they spend some amount of money. So in this case. Five new customers spend $100 each. That means you now have $500 of revenue, which could be, if you're early in the game, could just go straight back into a $500 ad budget. And then you take that $500, those $500 ads, and now you have basically five times the amount of money you started with. And you put, again, putting in that same input. This time now it's 5x the input. So Instead of $100, now I'm going to put $500 of ads, and instead of getting five customers, I'm now going to get 25 customers. And it could even scale up higher than that. It could be a little bit more exponential than just, you know, uh, A for B, you know, kind of simple scenario like this. But that's kind of the, that's the goal. That's the idea. We're trying to find a repeatable recipe in our marketing that we can do over and over and over, and we know that uh, if I spend at least $1,000, then I'm going to get in return $10,000 of revenue, or however you look at it. And uh, this great book, I want you guys to check it out. 
this book right here. Check this out. Get it on Amazon, the one-page marketing plan. This is, I read this book about two or three years ago, and uh, it is a fun little read. It's it's very simple, very great. If you're not into digital marketing, check this out. The one-page marketing plan by Alan Dibb. You can get it on Amazon for 5 to $10. Uh, you can get it used especially. Uh, but he talks about that there's this one concept that small businesses say they they say like well what is my I want to set an ad budget for the year and then what he's talking about like when you when people set ad budgets like hey, I'm going to cap it if I spend more than a thousand dollars I'm going to cap it they're basically saying that marketing is just a, a money that I just throw away it's an expense it has no return and if I hit a thousand dollars of ad spend, then that's it. I'm not spending any more money that this year on marketing. But he said, but if you think about that, that doesn't make sense for small business say, to say they have an advertising budget. You should have an, and he implies that, or he doesn't imply. He tells you that you should have an unlimited budget for marketing that works. So if I'm putting in a hundred dollars of marketing and it's returning two hundred dollars of revenue or returning a thousand dollars of revenue, then hell yeah, I'm gonna keep pumping money into that because I'm it's like would you trade I'll trade you this hundred dollar bill for eighty dollars. It's like, yeah, I'm doing that deal. Give me so if if I'm in Facebook ads and I'm running a campaign of five hundred dollars for the month, for the for the week, for two weeks, whatever it is, and I'm getting five wedding clients. Five wedding clients could be ten thousand dollars. That could be uh, fifteen thousand dollars. So now you have fifteen. You're telling me you would take if you knew that you could put in consistently five hundred dollars a month and get fifteen thousand dollars of revenue consistently. You're telling me you would you would put a cap on that. You would say like we got to stop this or shut it off or turn it down. No, absolutely not. One thing to think about with advertising budgets on Facebook is that you need to gather enough data. I made I have made this mistake a lot with Facebook ads, especially when I was trying to like be experimental or I didn't have enough money that year or I wasn't really you know I just I was still playing around not quite fully invested in it. Uh, that you have to gather enough data, and when I say gather enough data, I'm implying that you have to spend enough money with Facebook ads in order to get enough people doing the thing that you want them to do. And we'll talk about campaign goals here in a second, but if you you know, Facebook it it is pay to play. Facebook ads are basically pay to play. If you want a thousand people to come to your website, then you need to spend whatever certain amount of money depending on your target audience uh, to get those to get those thousand people to your website. Uh, because if you are not spending enough money, then you're not having enough data points, and then you don't really know what to do next, or you don't really know what to change, you don't really know what to tweak. If you're only spending $50 on a two-week campaign, and you get like, and then, you know, Facebook shows it to a 1,000 people, and you get like 17 people that visit your website, 17 people visiting your website is not enough to make a determination on your conversion rate on did this headline work? Is this video catchy enough? Is this button the right button size? Is the should it be learn more or should it be download or should it be add to cart or should it be book now? Like you cannot make those decisions. You're kind of just going through it blindly. Uh, so that's why you need to spend enough money. You need to, you know, like I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying to blow your budget or just go, you know, thousand dollars a day as a wedding photographer, but there has to be some kind of balance. You can't like cheap out on the Facebook ads and then go, well, it didn't, you know, oh, it didn't work. Oh, it sucks. Facebook ads don't work. Uh, I only got 20 people to my website and none of them converted. Okay, there are so many variables to consider. Um, and that's why you have to have enough money in the bank, enough money in the ad budget to get enough people to do the thing that you want them to do. So let's move on to now to lesson two. And that are the types of campaigns. So let's go. So Facebook has a couple different types. Yeah, I think Facebook has. It must. I think it seems like they have like ten different types of campaigns. As a wedding photographer, let's focus on like these kind of top three or top six wedding. Uh, what am I trying to say? These top six campaign goals. Number one, the, I kind of combine these. These are actually two different ones. Awareness and reach. Awareness is uh, usually on Facebook as they call it brand awareness. That's just getting people to know about your brand. I did this. It's kind of, it's, I'd say it's okay. Uh, reach is 
basically in simplest terms, and this is you kind of you use this strategy at your own will, but reach meaning we Facebook are going to show your ad in front of as many people as possible. Uh, sometimes as many times as possible. You can choose, say, like, hey, only show this ad to my audience once a day, um, but you can also turn that off, and Facebook will just blast this ad to as many people as possible that kind of fit your demographic, tar your target audience, and, uh, you know, you're just kind of saying, like, that's why I say it's kind of iffy because you're basically saying like fuck my customers I just want them to see my ad as much as possible I don't really care about their well-being or me bombarding them like just fuck it like show it as much as possible number two is traffic that's very straightforward people actually visiting your site or your landing page engagement means engaging with the posts uh, comments likes sharing it uh, almost like an actual Facebook post or fa or, or an Instagram post. Uh, lead generation, that is actually getting people to, say, an email page, an opt-in page, uh, and putting, or even for a wedding photographer, uh, an inquiry or some kind of uh, book a session, book an appointment, book a consultation. That could be a lead generation, like here's your number, here's my name, here's email, submit, that would be a lead. Uh, that's not, it's not saying like we're going to convert or actually tra you know buy anything add to cart convert. It's just saying like here is my contact information. Now we have a new lead. Number five, video views. If you're running a video trailer of some kind, it it's just going to help. This one's a little cheesy uh, because you're just saying like Facebook. I want you to show this video to as many people, and I'm trying to get views, baby. Just I'm all about the views. Which if you're on YouTube, you know that views don't really. The number of views does not really mean anything. I want to focus on the average number of views there are or, um, you know, watch time, things like that. I don't really care so much about, like, how many individual views or how many times you refresh the page and watch a video, whatever. Who cares? And number six, conversions. Did they actually pay you, add to cart, complete checkout, all that stuff. So the these are the kind of, if you're going to choose any campaign goals as a wedding photographer, Go with traffic, that's just traffic to your website. Lead generation, that's probably the most important one. You actually want people to book an appointment, book a consultation with you. And then number six, conversions. If you have the ability to buy or if you have a checkout form on your website as a wedding photographer, it might be a, might be a better idea to just do straight up convert or maybe you're a wedding photographer who teaches other wedding photographers you have some kind of course or you have some kind of downloadable pdf uh you could do conversions that way as well let me take a quick swig of my water mm. Mm -mm -mm. carbonated seltzer water baby for life all right let's get back to it oh i forgot to, i forgot this remember you to succeed remember i should have put facebook up here Remember, Facebook wants you to succeed. Uh, this goes without saying with your campaign goal that you should have your website landing page ready to go. This, uh, you know, you build your offering, you build the product, you get the copyright together, you get the video creative assets together, you, you of course get your website in the landing play page, or like you, you should have an idea or gentle sense or some kind of strategy as to where you want your people to go, where you want them to show up uh, before you actually turn on the ads and start sending traffic. Because if you're sending traffic to a crappy website or an incomplete website or a broken website, then cool, Facebook doesn't give a shit. Uh, you're just going to keep paying them money and you're going to waste a lot of money and then you're going to be like, this doesn't work, Facebook ad sucks, Jordan, and you're going to leave a comment and I'm not going to uh, feel too bad about you. Because you did not have a website or landing page that was ready to go optimized. You needed to test it out, mobile, desktop, tablet, iPad, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, test them all out. Make sure your website is ready to go so that when people click swipe up or add now or learn more, that it's actually an enjoyable experience. Who'd have thought? Lesson number three, target audience. This is the most important lesson that you should Consider when you're running your Facebook ads. Uh, this, I would say, it's your target audience. Like the goals are one thing. Goals are whatever. The goals are kind of like it's kind of important, but it's really about the target audience. And then right beneath that is the creative and copywriting and headlines. Uh, without knowing your target audience, you are just showing your ad into anybody that's willing to watch. 
or people that actually aren't married or getting married, or you, or worse, you might be as a wedding photographer showing it to single people. You might be showing it to people who are already married. Uh, if you're a wedding photographer and you're running ads, and I'm going to show you my little persona. I have actually a, a this is the persona that I use or kind of an outline. Uh, but if you're not showing your ads to people who are engaged or recently engaged, then you are not doing it right. Uh, that is your first and foremost only target audience that you should stick with. Um, I think only engaged people are getting married. I don't think married people are getting married and single people aren't getting married. Um, you know, something to think about. <laughs> Uh, did you know, and I, I did not know this in, uh, early on in the game, I, had, I learned this very later on, that you can upload, so if you have an email list, or you have a contact list, or you have a, a, a list of customers or clients that you have in the past, you can actually take that as a CSV and upload that into Facebook and say, Facebook, take these email addresses you know, do your little calculation, your dark web manipulation, looking at these people's personal info, whatever you do. Don't, I'm not, again, whatever you want to say about Facebook. Uh, and you can take the email list and say, make an audience that looks like this email list. And it's very effective. So if you already have a list, if you this is why I say to build an email list, have an email, have a have an email list of your clients, of contacts, prospects, uh, people that have obviously given you permission to use their email. Let's come. Let's be compliant here. Uh, but yeah, you can upload your email list to Facebook ads and say, find me look alike audience that look kind of like this one percent, five percent, and Facebook will go out and find those types of people that look like your email list, and now you have a nice little, fairly sophisticated, pretty damn close uh, customer list, a target audience, that, uh, y and you don't have to go and find in all these little specific aspects and personas and what they're interested in and demographics. You just say, make them look like this, and Facebook goes, you got it, boss. Now, here is the bride's persona that, this is, a very, this is an outline that I use. Uh, there's way more that you can add to this, but this is, take a screenshot of this. So if you're running ads as on Facebook, on it, when I say Facebook, I, I hope you know that I'm talking about Instagram as well. Uh, when you're running Facebook ads and they say, let's create a target audience. There are, there were two personas that I use. So brides, I did not really use grooms because just, it's just how it goes. I've been a groom. I was not really looking up face on Facebook or looking at wedding photographers, or even if I found a wedding photographer, you think me as the husband, me as the groom actually has any freaking say in this or sway in this conversation? No, it's the bride, baby. It's their wedding. It's their day. Uh, you, you, uh, you're just here for the ride. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, 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 the, the groom persona was not really that successful. So the two ones that I use are the brides and the other one I use are the mother of the bride or like, so it would be like, People in connection, uh, so let, let, but yeah, so mother of the bride and the bride were kind of my two most successful personas that I use to uh, convert a lot of ads into customers. My bride's persona, li there is something called a life event in when you're choosing your target audience. There's something called life event, and it could be like recently graduated, recently had a birthday, uh, death in the family, recently divorced. Another, there's a life event called recently engaged. When people get engaged, when women get engaged, typically, the first thing they start doing is looking up wedding dresses, wedding photographers, wedding venues. They go into the entire wedding process, uh, and they're probably starting on Instagram looking at wedding photographers. Uh, typically, and this is just a, a general statement. This is kind of generalized, or this is kind of like you're trying to you're trying to guess what the most typical type of client that you are probably going to expect. I'm not saying that all brides are this, or all people getting married fit within this description, but this is kind of what you should be targeting at for people that are willing to pay for this, can pay for this. Uh, or interested in this and are actually actively seeking wedding photographers. Age 20, 21 to 29, I was not looking at people from 18 to 20. If you're getting married, you probably want to drink, so you're probably at least 21 years of age, uh, and you're probably under 30. 
it's just, again, it's just a generalization. I know people above the age of 30 get married for the first time. Uh, I'm not making that judgment call. Uh, you can expand that. You can go 21 to 31. But the more narrowed you make it, the more specific you get it, that the more effective it tends to be. Uh, female, typically. Uh, location, I typically did uh, pockets, little 30-mile radiuses, radii, of my local area. So your targeted local area, whatever you are targeting. I'm an Iowa wedding photographer. I am a Texas, Austin, Texas wedding photographer. I'm a uh, Asheville, North Carolina wedding photographer. You're going to choose a whatever, a 30-mile radius. So for me, I was in Harrisonburg, Virginia which is just like two hours south of D.C. It's an hour uh, west of Charlottesville, Virginia, which had a lot of weddings. So I was targeting Harrisonburg, Virginia, Charlottesville, Richmond, uh, a little bit of D.C., and that was about it. So those are my, like, my, my four major pockets. I wasn't targeting New York City. Uh, I figured I need to kind of shine as this I'm a Virginia wedding videographer. So you char- target your local area, choose a little 30-mile radius, uh, and then... You can also target. There's, it gets pretty sophisticated. You can you can target zip codes specifically. You can target uh, people who have visited specific wedding venues, which kind of gets a little crazy. Uh, and then interested in. So this is the next part that I want you to guys to keep in mind. I did interested in wedding dresses, interested in wedding rings, interested in wedding wire, the knot, uh, large planners, bridal magazines. Uh, bridal YouTube channels, Facebook groups, uh, newly engaged, whatever kind of resources were out there. Facebook will give you suggestions when you type in like newly engaged or weddings. It will get, you know, interested in wedding videographers, interested in wedding photographers, interested in boho weddings, interested in traditional weddings, interested, you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's tons of stuff to add to the interested part or I, they follow these types of accounts or they consider themselves this, uh, so this is this is kind of a great persona that you can should use, uh, should at least start with, uh, and I, it usually converts because um, it did for me. So speaking from experience. Finally, let's move on to creative copywriting. Cr- oh, creative, sorry, creative slash copywriting, but those are kind of the same thing. So as always, and we talked about this before, we talked about this, I got the book here, .com Secrets, check it out, give it a read. Uh, we talk about hook, story, offer, our three major keys. Every recipe, every ad, every video, every photo has a hook, story, offer, a headline, a catchy piece of uh, fact or question or a weird emoji or something in all caps or some crazy flashing video or a, a provocative photo, anything that kind of gets the reader, gets the target audience to stop, look at what's going on and go, holy shit, what is this? And then the story, you tell them the story of you, you your ad could be the story of a past client that you had, it could be a testimonial, it could be a quote, it could be you uh, you know you were a behind the scenes photography uh, of you at a wedding. You hire a, a videographer to film you being a wedding photographer, showing you your process, showing how much fun your brides are having. They watch the video. That's the story. And then the offer. That's the call to action. That's the buy now, download now, book now, book a consultation. Uh, go to jordanpanderson.com slash weddings, wh- whatever it is, all that stuff. Uh, that's your offer. That's the thing that you want to uh, book now. We are booking for 2022. We are booking for the fall 2021. Uh, again, remember, Facebook wants you to succeed. So the nice part about uh, Facebook advertising that when you are adding your creative stuff, you have multiple different, you have usually about five slots for each component of the ad that you're running. So you have five five slots for headlines, five slots for descriptions, five slots for call to action, five slots for, uh, what's the other one? Just like the body text, like your, your main descriptor. Uh, and then you also have multiple slots for different types of video, different types of images, carousel images. Uh, you should be, when you're running these ads, test out a couple headlines. You don't really know what a good headline is just test a couple out. Uh, go, remember what we said, go out into the world and find what other people are doing. Find what other photo- wedding photographers are doing. Look at their ads and copy what they're doing and say, I like that headline. That's a good headline. I'm going to use that in my advertising, see if it works. And then 
what you do, the nice part about Facebook ads is that you can load up all of these headlines, you can load up all of these different scripts, call to actions, images, videos, all of that, and you just and you don't choose. Back when Facebook was very early on, you had to choose, I want these headlines to be read or I want these headlines to be shown to the people. And now you just upload very like just a bunch of them, test them all out, and you just say, Facebook, just put them out in a bunch of put uh, all these headlines out in front of people, do it in different combinations, use headline A with video A, and then do headline A with video B, and then just keep swapping, do image A with tagline B, image A with tagline C, and just kind of, and it will make this, it'll try to do-do-do, find this winning combination that this headline works, this video works, this call to action works, this description works, and so that when you're running the ads and you have a couple days under its belt, under you know you've had a couple days of running the ad, you can start to see what headline is working, and if you see any headlines that are not working, delete those, throw in a new headline, test something out, and if that starts working and that gets to the top, then delete the next losing one. Like just kind of keep deleting the losers, keep editing the losers until some all of them become winners, and then when you know all of them become winners then that's great now you have uh five winning headlines five winning pieces of video uh let facebook decide so let's now talk about content so when like i said at the very beginning of this video you as a wedding photographer have the advantage you have access to really high quality photos and you also have access to photoshop which means you can make different variations. You probably also are pretty good at Canva too, I'm, I'm assuming. So you need to make, this is gonna sound weird, but you need to make four to five different versions of the same piece of content in different formats, different headlines, different color grades, make one black and white, make one super saturated, make one where all the, add some more blues in the shadow, do one where people are looking right into the camera, do one where people are looking away from the camera, whatever photos that you think can work, and then also format them into 16 by 9, vertical, square, six, you know, uh, all this stuff, Just whatever you think can, and it's going to sound weird, like my typical process for running ads or creating ads for for a campaign is I will make the main video. Here's here's kind of my here's kind of my stat. Like I'll make the main video and that would be kind of like my baseline. So now I have the main video, so let's call it Facebook version 1. And then I will take that it's a, usually a 16 by 9 video, something like this that you're watching, and then I will take it and make a square version of it. And then I'll make the one with the bars on top and bottom like on Facebook easy a lot. And then I'll make a vertical video one. Uh, and then I'll format it so that it perfectly makes sense. Facebook, just note this, that Facebook also has a lot of algorithms and auto magic, auto magic cropping, and it will even add captions for you automatically. So there, you can also lean on that. Uh, but if you can control your own creative and, and you have the ability to control your own creative, just go for it. Don't let Facebook kind of choose where it thinks it should crop the photo. Like you crop it, give it a crop photo, and then throw that up into Facebook ads. And again, like the headlines, like the body of the text, it will choose, it will run and optimize the best creative, best image, best video to put in front of your customers that is going to get the most attention and get the most people clicking. And that is... Yeah, that is that's kind of how it works. And then, again, double down on what works. If something, if one video that you posted is working really well, or a headline is working really well, then take the headline, keep the top one that's actually working, double it, duplicate it, and tweak one word, or tweak, you know, add an emoji, or make it all caps, or make it lowercase, or make you know, change something that just slightly a little bit to kind of A/B test something. Uh, and if, you, if or if a photo is working, or if a video is working double down on it keep it going like we said at the very beginning of all this in the one page in this in this book right here one page marketing don't set an ad budget on an advertisement that is actually working if it's working if you're putting in a dollar and you're getting out ten dollars from the ad keep it going just keep churning baby churn baby churn like just keep it going and finally, one last thing to remember, you're going to run a campaign and maybe you run it for a whole season, maybe you run it for 30 days, 60 days, but you just have to remember that this is actually a phenomenon that happens. It's called ad fatigue. When you see the same ad over and over, uh, it just kind of starts to annoy you and then you become 
numb to it and then you don't really see it or acknowledge it at all and then it stops working after a while so every now and then every 30 days every 60 days you probably have to refresh your content change the offering change the photo change the video change the entire campaign uh, maybe even change the audience too don't forget to tweak the audience the same way you tweak your creative uh, just remember that ad fatigue is a real phenomenon so thank you guys for watching my name is Jordan Anderson. I hope this was very helpful and very interesting to you guys. This is kind of kind of my my high level one on one Facebook ad lesson. Uh, it is Facebook ad is probably your go to paid advertising strategy as a wedding photographer. If I'm telling you, it I, it's you need enough money to experiment with it, but I highly recommend that you start to experiment with Facebook ads. Get in there. You already have a Facebook. You, if you have an Instagram account and you have a Facebook page, you probably already ha means you already have a Facebook business account, which means you can run Facebook ads. Go to Facebook Ads Manager, create a campaign, choose your objective, and then start to find your target audience. And then once you've set your target audience, then it's time to start creating the ads themselves, the headlines, the videos, the subtitles, the descriptions, the call to actions, and send them to the site that you actually want them to go to. That Make sure that site is also optimized and ready to go. And see what happens. See how people react. See where the, where the customers are winning, where they're losing. Uh, you might, in the first try, not see anything happen. You might not convert, or you might get lucky. You might, if you spend two hundred dollars, you might convert a two thousand dollar client. Or you, but you know, if you, but think of it like this too. Keep experimenting, especially if you're early on. What I did very early on as a wedding videographer is I would put five hundred dollars of Facebook advertising. I'd put five hundred dollars in. I would book a thousand dollar client. I would book a two thousand dollar client, a fifteen hundred dollar client, and I would probably and I took most of that thousand dollars of revenue that I that I earned, and I put it right back into Facebook advertising because you just kind of want this to be kind of a positive feedback loop. You, and I know it sounds weird that you're just like taking all your money and dumping it back into ads to get more money, but that's kind of the process that you're trying to figure out. You're trying to figure out what is something, what winning combination of repeatable ads, words, and videos that I can create put in front of somebody that's going to convince them to hire me as a wedding photographer. That's your goal. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see you on Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern on this YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to like and comment. And if you have any questions, drop it here in the comments. Drop it here in the, in the chat. And uh, with that, we're going to end tonight's stream. And yeah, now we end this. Okay, let's end this. So thank you guys for watching. My name is Jordan P. Anderson, and I will see you on the next one.